I want to welcome everyone to His Glory Ministry from all over the world, the 7 million plus followers. God bless each and every one of you. Uh, we're going to give it a couple minutes to uh, see uh, this, to the, the, the ting, our YouTube audience and our Facebook audience. It's usually a delay, but this is our uh, weekly dash for His Glory. We have Stacy. Not in, not in California today. She's in Florida. <laughs> She's on Eastern time, which is better yeah. for, better for me because West, uh, West Coast time is you're gonna you're gonna have uh, trouble getting back to your normal schedule when you get back on the West Coast. It takes me about yeah. a week to get back after I'm traveling. Yeah, about a week. Yep. So uh, I, did, I haven't seen the notifications yet. Okay, here we go. We're live. All right. God bless each and every one of you. I want to pray over everyone uh, before we go into this. We pray that the Holy Spirit comes down uh, from east to west to north to south to be our, our true teacher in the living word of God. And we have Stacy with us today. This is Dash for His Glory. Again, if you're new to our, uh, our, all our platforms, we will, this will be on our website. We have a, a, a producer here producing the main one that will be uploaded to our website at www.hisglory.me. We're going live today on YouTube and Facebook, but this will be across all of His Glory social media channels. Good morning, God bless you. And welcome Stacy Dash to Dash Good morning. His Glory. So, God bless you, good morning. I, I'll turn it over so to good Stacey. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, it is afternoon now. We, were, we got a little bit of a late start, but um, we're here. She's here, so. Yes, by the grace and mercy of God, thank you. We want to uh, continue to tell you about the docu-series. We've had some really uh, uh, God moments this last week. Many, many, uh, many, many things that God is putting in our lap of the right people and the right partners for this docu-series that, 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 that Stacy's working on, that His Glory's helping with, and Harrison. Uh, and that's all the glory to God. I mean, these people are just popping up. Uh, the, the one we talked about, the app, he just said, God told me to go to his glory. And God told me that we, we need to work with you. And come to find yeah. out, he's got the most incredible app, which will be the, the final piece to this docu-series, which is uh, beautiful. So I'll let Stacy talk about the docu-series, maybe talk a little bit more about Unplanned, and maybe a little bit more about the, can you talk much about the upcoming movie, Roe vs. Wade? Or, or Roe v. Wade? Yeah. Sure, I okay. can. Yeah, absolutely. Because I want to make a major announcement today. For those who are not following, Ohio today passed the strongest heartbeat bill in the United States. And the governor just signed it into law uh, this morning. So that's the most, uh, that's, that's glory to God. That's the great first step. Uh, Ohio has a legislation going through right now as well to defund Planned Parenthood completely. Oh, so, praise God. Glory to God. <laughs> and if you have not seen wow. Unplanned, go see Unplanned. Even though there's a, they, they purposely uh, rated it R so that you wouldn't bring your kids to it. I brought <laughs> my kids to it 12 and 15. They cried through the whole movie and it changed them. And everybody needs to go see that movie, and everybody's going to need to go see Roe versus Wade. And we're going to need to pray, 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 pray for life, because conception yes. is life with the Lord. So I talk too much. So we'll leave it up to Stacy. <laughs> well, that's what we're doing. We need to stand in the gap for the unborn children, Amen. you know, that are being murdered. You know, um, this legislation that's just been passed in New York is just baffling and uh, so blatantly evil I, I you know it's it's disturbing but then it's also expected you know because we're not battling against flesh and blood right now and that if that's not proof of that I don't know what is um, right. you know killing an unborn baby at full term is just murder and how that could be legal is beyond my comprehension and just to, not to interrupt you to let you continue this but there's one thing i'm not sure if we told the audience i shared this with stacy but do you remember the last blood moon that came out there was mm -hmm. literally a blood moon god giving a warning over the uh world trade center two days later they passed that law in new york god warned them and they went ahead yeah. against god anyway we need to pray we need to pray well, thank God the Lord has overcome this world, so yep. it's just a matter of time. We just have to be patient and diligent and faithful, which is not always easy. Um, 
you know, I was telling you about that before we started, you know, it's, for me, it's been a, a kind of difficult week, you know, just my new journey with the Lord in the past two and a half years has been all about surrendering and, you know, finding out who I am. And in this past week, I've felt just completely void of God's love and God's presence and void of who I am and what my identity is, but just continuing to pursue him. And I know that the reason that happened is because I let go for one moment. For one moment, I stopped worshiping him and praising him and thanking him and being grateful. And in that moment, that's when the devil swoops in and tells you the lies that, you know, God doesn't love you. You've made too many mistakes. You've blown it all. You know, you'll never come back. You're not worthy. Uh, all of these lies. And... Um, it takes sometimes you getting down to your bare bones as far as, you know, feeling so ripped apart by these thoughts um, that are toxic and debilitating. And But the good news is that when you finally get to your knees in that point of weeping and wailing, that's the moment when the Lord just lifts you up and suddenly you can feel his presence and his love, um, which tells me that that's the whole purpose. The whole purpose is to die and to finally be just ripped apart, to become an empty vessel for him to fill. And, you know, all fall down the opioid docuseries that I'm working on is basically about that and reaching out to those people who are suffering from addiction because the addiction is a, is a vicious circle. It's just a vicious circle of this feeling of unworthiness and this hole, this empty hole. It's a, you know, a malady of the soul. There's this deep, deep darkness that exists inside that you try to fill with drugs or alcohol or whatever else your addiction may be. And it wears off. So then you go back to doing it again. And then eventually, you know, unfortunately, some of us die and, or some of us lose everything. But for those of us who don't die, you know, um, and are given the grace and mercy of God to fall to the darkest depths of our being, you know, I call it the dark night of the soul. But I'm grateful for that because it was in that dark night of the soul that I found the Lord. The Lord found me and uh, told me, I'm here, I've never left you. And you're forgiven. And with All Fall Down, this docuseries, it's important to me that people understand that you know, whether you're the one suffering from addiction, whether you're the spouse of an addict or the parent of an addict or the child of an addict, shame has to be dispelled because that's what stops a person from getting help. Now, dispelling shame does not mean you don't experience shame. Shame is a necessity, but it's not a place where you live. It is just a stepping stone. But shame is the place that you reach that you can finally surrender all to God and to Jesus because he is the only way. There is no other way to be saved from this malady of the soul, which is addiction. And, you know, right now in our country, it's, it's at such a great height, the level of death, deaths that are happening from overdoses and suicides and just lives just being wasted away in misery and pain um, that need to be helped and need to be brought to God's salvation and his love and his mercy. Um, like I said this week, I was feeling very void of his love, void of my own identity. And I've been on this journey for two and a half years. But it's a constant, constant battle. The good news is, is that he never leaves you. He never leaves you or forsakes you. 
And sometimes it's not even conceivable. You can't even understand it. You can only experience it and feel it. And when you come on the other side of it, just praise and worship and feel his glory. And I am so grateful. I am grateful for every sorrow, every tear, every pain, every moment of humiliation because I get to die to myself and I get to die to my pride and then I get to be filled with his glory, with the, the presence of Jesus and his Holy Spirit Amen. and there's no greater joy than that. But it's not an easy road, it's not, it's not easy. That's why Jesus tells us we have to bear our cross daily. He, yes. he didn't say once a year on Resurrection Day. He didn't say once a week, once a month. It's to pick up our cross daily because he took it to the cross for us. And so those in times of weakness that we feel weak, that's where his strength is. And we just need to get closer and closer and closer and closer. It's like working your spiritual muscle. There's days that you don't want to do it and Satan's saying, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> But you got to do it, do it, do it. We were talking to Stacy earlier. We're going to create a, a, a line of clothing called Spiritual Boot Camp. And that's exactly what each and every one of us are going through. We're going through a spiritual boot camp. And there's three phases of spiritual boot camp if you're a Marine and, and most military as well. And it's the same walk in your Christian walk. You may be a phase one, which is salvation. You may be a phase two, which is sanctification, where it's the wilderness period. That's where you think he's left you but that's where he's really working you. He's working you in those wilderness periods. And that phase two, is, if you followed our series in phase two of, of making a Marine, that's where Marines are made in phase two. And that's where our spiritual walk is made during those wilderness periods of our life. And we gotta rely on him to get to the third phase. And the third phase is the glorification phase so that we can be used for his perfect glory. Mm -hmm. And even when we're in the third phase, we're still gonna have to carry our cross until we get home because we have to crawl if we have to crawl. So it's so beautiful that what she's telling you from the Holy Spirit, because every single person, if there's a Christian out there that says they don't go through this battle, they'll lie about other things too. Don't listen to them because we all are fallen and we all need the support and love of each other. The one church, Christ is the head, we are the body and we need to unite each other in love. Love, that's it. That, that's the key, love. Love is the key, and it's so easy for love to just be washed out of you. It's amazing to me how quickly love can just be taken out of your heart, you know, and be replaced with bitterness or resentment or jealousy or envy or any of these negative things, anger. You know, uh, it blows my mind sometimes. But when you just turn your face back to Jesus and just keep your eyes on him suddenly the love comes back you know if you just stay there just fight and it is a fight it is an actual battle to stay there and keep your eyes on Jesus sometimes all that's all I can do is just say Jesus help me Jesus help me help me because I am a sinner yeah. I am a sinner and I am guilty of all these things of jealousy of pride of anger of you know, resentment, all of these things, bitterness. I'm guilty, but I don't want to be there. I don't want to be that thing. I don't want those things. So I always say, you know, my favorite prayer, which is search me and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. Then lead me in the way everlasting because I know that I can't do it on my own. I can't. Amen. I need Jesus to help me. That's something that uh, I mentioned to, to, if you follow us a long time, uh, this is where we came up with Project Z. If you follow us on Take 5, where all my military uh, contacts came from, was my mentor back in 2010, Chuck Missler. And that was his famous prayer that he used to say every night. He says, Lord, he would say, if there's anything in me that is not giving you glory, show me so I can remove it. And yeah. that's a great, great way to end your day saying, Lord, I'm a fallen man. I'm a fallen woman. We're all fallen. If there's something that's there, tell me and I'll remove it for your purpose and your glory. And I'll right. never forget that prayer from Chuck Missler. And um, Chuck's looking down on us right now with a big old, you know, Chuck's grin. Mm -hmm. He's grinning. Because uh, 
he's, he's, he's brought a lot of people home and that, we pray that this brings a lot of people home. And that's why we, we really want to start this spiritual boot camp, not just for the clothing line. We're gonna have a spiritual boot camp, a, a, um, a module on our web, website so that it can walk you through whether you've been taken away from the Bible and you need to get back in, or you're in phase one or phase two or phase three of spiritual boot camp. We're gonna give you a module to help you bring you in. Because the one thing that we need to do as Christians is we need support. We can't fight this battle by ourselves. A lot of time, it's our, maybe it's our pride or maybe embarrassment. We think we're gonna go into our prayer closet and fight Satan all by ourselves. No, that's why God, through Jesus Christ, created the church. The church needs to be united. This is the seventh element of, of, of warfare. Two offensive weapons, which is the word of God. The second is the artillery fire, praying of the saints to lift each other up. We need support. We need that spiritual support because we are at war. And this war is not, as Paul said, not with the flesh. It's the principalities, the spirit. Satan does not want you to get in the word of God. So when you know something's pushing you away from the word of God, that's not God. That's Satan. And God wants us in the word. And we need to lift each other up. All in love. All in love. We got her back. We thought okay. we had. All right. <laughs> Do you want to uh, add anything on to the spiritual boot camp? Uh, my, my wife and uh, Stacy are going to start developing a spiritual boot camp uh, a line. But it's going to be not just a clothing line. We are going to... Put our, put our mouth and walk the walk instead of just talk the talk. We're going to put a module out there to help people. As God's put yeah, it. Yeah, and I'd also like that to be an element of all fall down. You know, um, you know, in the docu series, I would love to have you know that be a part of the docu series because it, it, that would the most difficult part of recovery. You know, for an addict is not you know the detox part. You know, getting off the drugs. It's the actual integration back into real life. Right. And that's where you really need the spiritual boot camp because you can't do it without the Lord. There's no way. There's no way to do it without God. And so I would love for that to be incorporated into All Fall Down. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be an incredible docuseries. Uh, the, the, the people that God's putting in our place, we talked about this, this app that's coming out. This app is yeah. absolutely incredible. And we're going to have Joe on as a testimony maybe next week or the following week. Eight years ago, as he told me his story, he was, on, he was going to commit suicide from heroin. And now, after God saving his life literally and spiritually, he had a dream to create this app that is going to help tremendously. It's an app that you will be able to download on your iPad or your iPhone or whatever device. And it will get you the nearest help right away. And it'll also be an app that if you fall down after, after the initial rehab, that you'll have a support mechanism of Christ and medical tied together. And that's the key. We have to have both. You gotta have the medical to come in and you gotta have the spiritual because there's no way you're gonna be able to do it without the spiritual piece. And that's Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ is it. So it's gonna lift everybody up. We all fall down, but we all get back up. Like Humpty Dumpty, right? <laughs> By the grace and mercy of God, yes. And sometimes Humpty Dumpty falls a lot of times. We fall a lot. We just got to get back up. <laughs> it's like a Marine. When you fall, you get back up. And you right. keep getting back up. And saying, Lord, I give it to you. I give it all to you. It's all for your purpose and your glory. So uh, any more you want to add to the docuseries before maybe just touching on Roe versus Wade? Um, no, that I think that, yeah, for, the, for now that's good. Okay. That, the, so just to uh, remind people... Um, many have asked what the budget is. We are looking at uh, roughly $150,000 for the budget of this docu-series to do it completely, to do it right. Uh, currently, I think- that would, be, that would be per episode, yeah. yeah. So currently, I believe we at uh, roughly $26,000. So um, going across the 7 million followers, please, uh, we'll get the link out to, the, uh, to support the, the, uh, the opioid uh, docu-series. Pass that on to friends and relatives because I'm getting so many emails each day or through our info at hisglory.me of people's lives that have been impacted by this and they want to help. So please pass this link, email this link, share this link because we want to do it different. We make a difference in the opioid crisis 
But more, as, more, as important, if not more important, is to lead them to Christ, because that's the only salvation. That's the only thing that will sustain them. So, all right. So, uh, you, it, the Roe versus Wade couldn't be coming at a better time, the movie that she's going to be in. Uh, that's the one I actually did a lot of research on, and this is, uh, I'm excited for this movie. Um, I'll let Stacey talk about what you can talk about, about Roe vs. Wade. Coming out on the, the tail end of Unplanned is perfect. And that's just, yeah. like, just like it's a guy. Be out, be yeah, it comes out in October. Um, and it is basically about the trial in 1973. And, you know, getting the film made was very difficult. We had to change the name to 1973 because we were getting so much pushback and people literally, you know, when they found out what film we were making, shutting us down, people walking out, quitting, it was, you know, pretty, pretty amazing. But that's when you know you're doing something good. Amen. And um, it's good. It's, it shows both from a scientific and religious point of view uh, about life being at, happening at conception. And I play Dr. Mildred Jefferson, and she was the first black woman to graduate Harvard Medical School, and the first woman surgeon at Boston you know, Medical University. And her, she, she was one of the founders of the Right to Life, and her position was both from scientific and theological. So, you know, it's, it's very, very interesting. Um, and she fought very hard at a time when it, you know, when it was difficult and she, you know, the whole feminist movement, she didn't believe in that either. And it's very close to home for me because I, I've, as I've shared before, I've had my own encounter with abortion and thank God, you know, I, while I was on the abortion table, God spoke to me. God spoke to me. He spoke to me like I'm speaking to you. And he told me, Stacy, keep your son. He even told me it was a boy. And, you know, right now my son is 28 years old and I can't imagine my life without him. And he, he literally saved my life. And I'm so grateful, so grateful. God. And uh, I know there are women who have made choices and, you know, and I'm not, there's no condemnation here. It's just about knowledge and information and what the truth is. And the truth is that life begins at conception. And so when you're making a choice, you know, about having a child, that choice should be made before you conceive the child. You know, and women right now are talking about, you know, losing their rights because they can't have an abortion. Abortion is not a right, it's a choice. It is not part of the Constitution. So that first of all needs to be taken out of the equation that it's someone a woman's right to kill a child an unborn baby yeah. Yeah, so it's and uh, this film you know just puts a light on the whole truth of the entire trial of roe v wade and why it was overturned and, and which is needed on on www.hisglory.me under i believe it's for a word for his glory we have a biblical teaching where we show you unequivocally in the Bible where God says life starts at conception. Without any shadow of a doubt, the Lord tells us through the scripture. And uh, you can get that on www.hisglory.me. Uh, I don't know if I've ever told anybody this. I'm kind of ste stepping out a little bit. But the Lord did give me a prophetic word that Roe versus Wade would be overturned. And um, we pray for that. We pray yes. for that. And uh, it's it, and he all, the Holy Spirit also told me how it may be overturned, and that would be through the right of the man. And going through the lower courts as we speak is such a case where the man is saying, "Hey, I have every right to that child as the woman does," and that is going to make its way to the Supreme Court. Thank so, you, Father. It's, Thank you, Jesus. God's got it. God values life and. One last thing that Stacy brought up, and I want to make sure everyone realizes this. We have all done horrible things in our life. Horrible things. I am the chief of sinners, as the Apostle Paul said. And I've fallen down, and I need help, and I'm a work in progress. 
But we got to remember what the, pro what the prophet Isaiah told us. Your sins will be as scarlet, but they'll be washed as white as snow. Knowing that the Lord, if you take it to him, no matter what it is, you take it to the Lord with a true heart, it's washed away. So don't let Satan beat you up for something you did in the past when God forgave you through his son on that cross. That's Satan trying to give you doubt and he's trying to mess with your mind. And you, you can't do that because once God is to accept that, that, that forgiveness, it's gone, it's looked at. We see that in the scripture in Samuel where David, where God looked at David and God says, David had a pure heart. You think, well, how could David have a pure heart? He committed adultery, he, he, he committed murder. But he saw the, 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 the love of David. That's why David is called the apple of God's eye. Because God didn't see sin anymore. Because David took it to the cross, before the cross. He knew through his bloodline, the tribe of Judah would be our, our King of Kings and Lord of hosts, our Savior, Jesus Christ. So don't let anybody tell you, or don't let Satan tell you that you're not worthy or you're bad because you did something bad. We've all done things bad. And if God can forgive King David, he can forgive anyone. He can forgive anyone. And he's in the forgiveness business because he loves you that much. Yes. See, I go on, mm -hmm. I go on tangents. We, Stacy needs to talk, not me. So <laughs> any, any, anything no, you want to say? God's forgiveness, that's, that's it. His grace and his mercy. It, it doesn't end. You know, it doesn't matter what you've done. God will forgive you. Amen. And, you know, he says, forgive lest you, you, if you want to be forgiven, if, you know, who am I not to forgive anyone? And if God's forgiven me, not only forgiven me, he gave his only begotten son for my life. So who am I not to forgive myself? And I find that that's the most difficult thing is forgiving yourself. But if God forgave you, who are you not to forgive yourself? Amen. And God cast your sins into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered again. And he just loves you and forgives you. Once you repent and ask for his forgiveness, it's given. And uh, what she just said, when God takes your sin and throws it into the sea for good, that's not a figure of speech. That's literal. The sea is an idiom to the second death. What today's daily bread was about Revelation 22 when we tabernacle outside of time and space with God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And there's no sun, no moon anymore because they are the light. And there's no sea because Christ overcame the second death. And sin is conquered by the blood of the Lamb. So that is a literal thing she's talking about, not a figure of speech. Glory to God. Beautiful. Anything in closing before I uh, close us out in prayer, Stacy? Just God bless you all. And I pray that you are filled with the Holy Spirit and that whatever battles you're going through right now, just seek the Lord just seek Jesus just ask Jesus to help you keep your eyes on him Amen. and he will he'll never leave you or forsake you no matter what you've done Amen. I could say any better it's those times where we think he's the furthest away from us is actually the closer he is but he's just saying reach out grab me I'm here and we got to reach out and grab like Peter looked at Christ he could walk on water as soon as he started looking down, he started to sink. That's the way we are every day. Keep our eyes and our heart on Jesus Christ and we can walk on water with him through his strength. And we close in prayer to each and every one of you all over the world that's gonna see this message, whether it's today or in the coming weeks and months. May the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and King David bless you and, and keep you in his love and his peace and his shalom and know that he wants to have a love relationship with you. It's all about love. If you're in religion, you're doing it wrong. It's a love relationship. And the risen Christ wants to have that love relationship with you. We pray over all your family, your friends, and all those who do not know the living Christ, that a seed will be planted. We're called eternal planters. We wanna plant that seed for the, for the kingdom glory of our King and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless each and every one of you and thank you for turning in for Dash for His Glory. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Thank you.